Now, we're going to see things in action. We're going to look at ac acceleration, angular acceleration, never to be confused with linear acceleration. In linear acceleration, we had F equals ma. Now we are going to have rotational acceleration. A torque relative to a certain point will cause a rotation, provided that you know the moment of inertia, about that point, about the axis through that point, times alpha, which is a vector. Alpha is the omega dt, and omega is the theta dt squared, and for which I will write often theta dot. Now before we go through with this, we have to make one thing absolutely blatantly clear. It is very unfortunate that in these problems, omega occurs often, and there are two omegas, and they have totally, totally different meaning, and that can be very confusing. So let's settle this once and for all. There is one omega which is defined as the theta dt. For instance, I have a pendulum here, I have an angle theta here, the pendulum is swinging, there is a change in theta, and that change in theta, the theta dt, I call omega. The theta dt is zero when the pendulum reaches a maximum, the theta dt is then zero, and omega reaches a maximum when the pendulum goes through equilibrium. That is one way that we define omega, and that is this omega that we have here. Then there is another one, and that is once you define the period of oscillation of this pendulum, you have a term of cosine omega t, and this omega is unrelated to that omega. This omega equals 2 pi divided by t, which is the period of one oscillation. This one, this omega, is constant all the time. It doesn't change, because effectively what it states, it, it relates the period, it relates to the period of oscillation. This omega is changing all the time. It's zero here, and it reaches a maximum here. So I cannot be specific enough to point out to you that these omegas are very different. Okay, so our alpha is this d theta dt squared. All right, let's write down once more tau equals i times alpha. I take a pendulum, something that's not being asked in your book, I have here an angle theta, I have here a point P, and I have here an object M. If I leave this alone, the system, it's hanging in gravity, this wants to go back in this direction. There is a torque relative to point P, and that torque equals the mass times, sorry, the torque equals the moment of the, I'm getting a little bit confused, the torque equals, okay, come on, let's R cross F. What is R? That is this line that has a certain length L, so this is L, but since I have a cross product, I have to take R perpendicular, so it is L sine theta, and I have the fourth, which is mg. So this is the torque relative to point P. It's the cross product. It is in this case in the paper. This is the torque relative to this point P. Think of it as an axis going like this. Now, this torque also equals I alpha. And I relative to point P is totally trivial. 
that is ML squared. That's the definition of moment of inertia. And alpha is theta double dot. So I can write down this one being equal to that. But before I do that, we have to talk about the minus sign. Just as when we had a spring, when I move an object away from equilibrium in positive x direction, there is a restoring force that brings it back to equilibrium and therefore the force equals minus kx. Here we have a similar situation. We bring this away from equilibrium. We bring this to a positive value for theta and the, the torque is restoring it, is going to bring it back to equilibrium. I therefore have to introduce a minus sign. And so I get mg times L times the sine of theta, which is the magnitude of the torque, equals minus ML squared, which is the moment of inertia, about that point P, times theta double dot. This minus sign is crucial. It gives it the restoring char characteristics. Well, if we go to small angle approximation, and we deal, we express everything in terms of radians, then I can write down for sine theta, theta, this m eats up this m, this l eats up this l, and I get the famous differential equation, theta double dot plus g over l times theta equals zero. This is a striking example of this equation. You see everything in action now. It's immediately obvious that this is a simple harmonic oscillation. And this simple harmonic oscillation has a frequency omega. I can write down theta equals theta zero times the cosine of omega t plus some phase angle phi depending upon the initial condition. And this omega is very different from the omega that I mentioned earlier, it is not d theta dt, but this omega equals 2 pi divided the period of the oscillation. And that's a constant. Whereas this omega, the d theta dt, is not a constant. Well, in this particular case, if you solve this differential equation, which I'm sure you can, you substitute this solution in here, you'll find that omega equals the square root of g over l and the period equals 2 pi times the square root of l over g. The longer the pendulum, the larger the period will be. All right, I think we have hit that hard enough now. <laughs>